this is Fem Psychon's ninth vlog, and happy Thanksgiving to all my Americans out there. My next few posts are going to be about pregnancy. Today's post is on lupus and pregnancy. I didn't know until I was searching the medical literature about gender disparities and diseases that 9 out of 10 lupus diagnoses are women in reproductive age. Women who are pregnant and have lupus are more likely to give birth prematurely, among other complications that I'll talk about in a little bit. So this paper was published in April of this year in the Journal of Experimental Medicine, Longitudinal Profiling of Human Blood Transcriptome in Healthy and Lupus Pregnancy. The first authors are Hong, Banchero, and Maslow, and the senior authors are Banchero, Salmon, and Pasquale from Whale Cornell Medicine. So this study tries to answer several questions using blood patient samples. The questions include, what does healthy pregnancy look like? What does successful implantation look like? What does lupus or SLE pregnancy look like? What mechanisms underlie increased risk of complications in SLE pregnancy? And can we predict complications in SLE pregnancy? In today's video, I'll only go over the last two questions. However, if you're interested in learning how and what answers the authors get for the first three questions, I can definitely go into it. This is a pretty big paper with a really well set up experimental design. I go over a little bit of what the answers are in the written post and the link should be below. But today, let's go over complicated pregnancies in SLE. So first off, why are SLE pregnancies so important? I've already mentioned that women who have lupus are more likely to give birth prematurely, but SLE patients also have increased risk of having preeclampsia, fetal or neonatal death, and growth restriction. These adverse outcomes occur in one of five SLE pregnancies. So there's definitely a need for early biomarkers to predict pregnancy outcome in SLE patients and help inform treatment in order to decrease morbidity and mortality. First, the researchers observed when women deliver their babies. Healthy pregnancies and SLE pregnancies without complications had no difference as to when they were delivered. However, SLE patients with preeclampsia or other complications delivered much earlier, around 30.8 to 31.5 weeks of gestation. The researchers observed an increase in the neutrophil signature in pregnancies with preeclampsia compared to all other groups at the P1 time point. T cell and B cell signatures were downregulated in early stages in all pregnancy groups but more significantly downregulated in SLE pregnancies with preeclampsia. A decrease in interferon, cell cycle, and plasma cell pathways were less steep in other complications compared with preeclampsia. The researchers then validated these changes via whole blood fax analysis at the time points P1 and P2 when pregnancy complications were not apparent yet. Preeclampsia pregnancies showed an increase of immature neutrophils. Both branches of immunity, innate and adaptive, or T cells and B cells, are highly regulated during the early stages of SLE pregnancy, and any dysregulation of the cell populations can lead to the complications in pregnancy. The authors did note that high SLE activity at the time of conception is associated to the increased risk of having complications during pregnancy. Finally, the researchers then used their data to create a predictive signature for preeclampsia in pregnant patients with lupus. The authors used a total of 8,201 genes to determine if they can predict preeclampsia in lupus pregnancy. The success rate of predicting preeclampsia correctly using the gene transcripts was higher than any current clinical parameters. However, if both the algorithm and clinical parameters are combined, the success rate is higher than either one alone. And in case you were wondering, some genes that help predict preeclampsia in lupus pregnancies are involved in pathways such as the interferon response, plasma cell, platelet aggregation, angiogenesis, inflammation, and cell adhesion. With this model, the researchers indicate that early transcriptional changes in maternal blood may help predict preeclampsia and lupus pregnancies. 
so what does this all mean? This paper identifies key pathways and genes that lead to a healthy pregnancy or pregnancies without complications, successful embryo implantation, and complications in lupus pregnancy. Researchers have recently shed light on the role of interferon in lupus pathogenesis. However, since this is also a really important immune pathway, it makes sense that it plays a role in healthy pregnancies. For example, the establishment of the maternal fetal interface and its maintenance. Based on this paper's data, the lack of correct modulation of this pathway and other immune pathways is what leads to complications in pregnancies in women with and without lupus. As with all papers, even a big detailed paper such as this, there are caveats. Authors need to validate if these pathways are crucial in healthy pregnancies. For example, doing knockdown experiments in mouse models of SLE and seeing if pregnancy complications are affected. Another caveat, the authors determine that correct modulation and the timing of this modulation is important in healthy pregnancies. But when are these important time points? And do they coincide with the hormonal changes during pregnancy? Can they be regulated by the hormone receptors? Lastly, another question that comes up is that these studies were done with blood. However, is blood accurate? Would amniocentesis be more accurate? I know that they use facts to check if the actual blood cell populations change in conjunction with the transcriptional changes, but organ specificity may be a factor to keep in mind. Overall, the authors of the study determined that correct modulation and timing of modulation of immune cell populations are important in healthy pregnancies and successful embryo implantation. This blood transcriptome analysis narrows down potential pathways that can cause complications in pregnancy and demonstrate a predictive model for preeclampsia in patients with lupus. Thank you for reading, listening, and watching my assessment on lupus and pregnancy. Keep informed, stay interested, and keep doing great women's health research. Bye! Thank you for watching. If you're interested in this content, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I post every Thursday on different current research papers pertaining to women's health on fempsychom.com. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at fempsychom. Bye!